So welcome everybody to the second part of uh, the lecture related to the Hodrick Prescott filter technique. So we said um, the topic was motivated by this article, like breaking news, high European unemployment is due to recession, like published in the year 2013. It is a case that the unemployment rate in Spain is relatively high. Uh, but we don't know whether it's due to a recession or whether the natural rate of unemployment is also very high. So we said in case that we use uh, like the orange line here in order to uh, measure the natural rate of unemployment, then the unemployment gap is relatively low. Therefore, when we look only at the unemployment gap, we would say Spain is not in a recession uh maybe in a mild recession here because there is a small unemployment gap but when we measure the natural rate of unemployment as a straight line then it is a case that the unemployment gap is relatively huge like a five percent unemployment gap in 2013 and then we would say that spain is in a recession so now i would like to switch to excel and I would uh, like to show how we can program our own like uh, Hodrick uh, Prescott filter. And of course, it will be the case like that the first component and the second component will play an important role. So like in a first step, I would like to show you the Excel sheet. So like the data set looks as follows in column B, I have like the time. Uh, measured in quarters in column C, like we have a time index. In column D, we have the unemployment rate. And the unemployment gate, uh, rate goes like from the level of about 10%, like all the way up to the level of uh, 25% in 2013. So in a first step, like we have to calculate the natural log of the unemployment rate, which is performed in column E. So equal to ln of cell number D9, then it is the case that uh, we have calculated the natural log of the unemployment rate. Um, in the next step, we have to copy like all the information down. So like when we uh, leave the cell, then we go back to the cell, we have a big white cross. When we go to the right lower part, then a small black cross occurs and it is the case that now we can copy all the information down. Like tau, I would like to start with a value of 2.0 uh, in the first cell, and then I will let tau increase like by uh, 0.2 units like each period. Now I can also copy like this information all the way down. Uh, in the end, I'll ask Excel like to um, uh, change all the taus so that we can minimize the loss function. Now we have to think about like the first component of the loss function. It is the difference between u, like the natural log of the unemployment rate and the tau variable. Uh, we have to put it in brackets, we have to square it, and in the end, we have to sum up over like all observations which are there. So, like in a first step, we say equal to, then in brackets, u minus tau, the natural log of the unemployment rate minus tau in brackets, and then we square it. So, we can also copy like this information all the way down. And then we take like the sum of this time series. So uh, we take the sum and um, here we can use like the auto sum function. Uh, we sum like all the squared differences. So like here, the formula is we sum up from G9 to G60. And like this part here, I will color it in red ink. Like this corresponds to the red part here. It is the log of the unemployment rate minus tau in brackets squared. And then we sum up. Now we have to think about the second part. 
uh, the tau part. Okay, uh, also the formula, I've written it down here. Uh, we have to start in the second cell because only there we have information about uh, tau in t plus one and tau in t minus one. Please orientate yourself like at this uh, time index, which is given in column C. So I open two brackets and then I say it is uh, tau in t plus one, so f11 minus like f10. And then I close the bracket. This is the first part. And then minus, I open the bracket. Uh, it is f10 minus like f9. I close like all the brackets and then I square this part. Of course, like here, um, the value is equal to zero because of the fact that the change of the change of tau is equal to zero. Tau increases by 0.2 units every uh, quarter. Now I'll copy all the information down. We have to be careful because we cannot copy it all the way down like we have to stop here because else we would not have any observations for tau anymore. Okay, well, we also have to sum up. So we use like the auto sum function to sum up. Okay, like also the sum uh, should be equal to zero because there is no change in the change of tau. Now we have to create like the target cell. The target cell is like the first sum plus lambda, which I set equal to 100 here, times the second part uh, of the loss function, like the black part of the loss function. I can go back to the function in my slide desk. So I'm talking about this part, like the first sum plus lambda times the second sum. Okay, um, in the next step, I would like to have a time series once more of the unemployment rate. And this is equal to, I have to take like the anti-log, um, the exponent like of, of this variable here, and I'll be back to the series of the unemployment rate. Here I can copy like also all the information down. Uh, the large tau is like the anti-log, the exponent of the small tau here. And then I can compute like the unemployment rate, uh, the unemployment gap. And the unemployment gap is the difference between the realized unemployment rate and like the natural rate of unemployment, which is equal to our tau. So I copy all the information down. Now we have to optimize the loss function. So I'll go to data and then solver. And then I have to set the objective function equal to H4, like our value for the loss function. We want to minimize it. And uh, the changing variable cells are from F9 to F60. So like all our taus should change so that in the end, like the value in H4 is at a minimum. So right now the value in H4 is equal to eight. When I press the solve button, all the taus should change and this value should be smaller than eight. Let's check. Press the solve button. Yeah, like the value in cell number H4 is relatively small here. Uh, tau has changed, like the whole series of tau has changed. And let's check uh, how uh, the last elements look like. So what about the realized unemployment rate? What about the natural rate of unemployment? And what about the unemployment gap? like there is like one picture here. Um, so the blue line, this is the unemployment rate. 
the red line, this is tau, the natural rate of unemployment, and u minus tau, uh, like this is the unemployment gap. So it seems to be the case that um, the first picture was created with a lambda, which is relatively small. Let's check what happens if we are changing the lambda to a larger value. Let's uh, raise the relative weight of the second component to a relatively large value. And this should lead in the end to a situation where uh, the natural rate of unemployment is a straight line and the unemployment gap should be relatively huge in 2013. So I have changed lambda to 100,000. And now I'll once more ask the Excel solver to solve this uh, minimization problem. The loss function should be minimized. So right now the loss is at 160. This should be smaller after I've run the Excel solver. Uh, let's check a uh, year, like the sum is smaller now. And what about the picture? Yes, like tau is more or less like a straight line here and the unemployment gap in 2013 is relatively high. Let's go back to the slide desk. So like it seems to be the case that something has changed how the European Commission is measuring the natural rate of unemployment. It seems to be the case that before 2013, uh, the European Commission used a kind of Hodrick Prescott filter with a relatively small value for lambda. When we pick a small value for lambda, then uh, there is not a big difference between the realized unemployment rate and the natural rate of unemployment, so that the unemployment gap is relatively small. So when we just focus on the unemployment gap, we do not believe that there is like a recession in Spain. However, when we use a relatively large lambda, for example, 100,000, then it is the case that the natural rate of unemployment is a straight line. Uh, it is the case that the um, uh, unemployment gap takes relatively high values. I think I made a mistake in the beginning. So the unemployment gap is uh, like not 5%, but 10% in 2013. So here it is the case that uh, Spain is definitely in a recession and hence Spain should be allowed to perform an expansionary fiscal policy. So Spain should be allowed to increase government spending or decrease taxes. When uh, we performed like this exercise in class, one student said, hey, it really seems to be the case that the size of lambda is important. When you get lambda wrong, you can really make the life of millions of people miserable. And this is the case. Lambda is important because lambda decides whether the unemployment gap is small or whether the unemployment gap is huge. Like here, we were able to estimate that the unemployment gap is up to 10%. In case that you have questions, yeah, please comment in the um, uh, YouTube chat. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Have a nice day and bye-bye.